Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me. We have another question from the comments section and it's how do I smooth out my transitions when I'm working on scales, a riff, or a run? Make sure you watch the entire video at the end and see if you've made the mistakes and then also comment in the comment section below if you can resonate with what I was saying. The first one is you're just using too much effort, either with your left hand or your right hand. I talked about, are you squeezing too hard in a previous video? And you're just relying on your left hand to squeeze down and you squeeze as much as you possibly can to create a sound. And really, I talk about that video that you only need the lightest touch and you also need to use a combination of this push-pull motion when you are wedging this portion of the body of the ukulele to this portion of your body. So it's body to body and you're essentially pulling or pushing, I should say, that fretboard into your finger as you pull back. So there's a push-pull motion. I've also heard it called a counterweight before. A push-pull motion so really you're barely using any pressure with your fingers on your left hand. Now with your right hand, I've had some students, they either with guitar or ukulele, they just pluck for dear life. <laughs> it's really, really rigid and they pluck with full force. It's but you really don't need that much. You have to think nice and loose. Ease up a little bit, all right? So shake out your hands. Think of the force that you're using and or the effort that you're exerting and then think 50% less because anytime you have tension in your hands, you could create strain and pain and it's also going to make your movements very rigid and it's going to basically stunt your growth when you're trying to speed things up along the fretboard if you would like to play something a little bit faster. You have to remain loose and calm. Number two, I call this the hunt and peck, where they're just using one finger to play a riff, a run, or a scale. So for example, C scale, I'm just going to use my index finger. Okay, I played the notes correctly, it sounded okay, but you're not allowing your other fingers to work. And your other fingers need to work in order to build strength and dexterity. So. Try not to do the hunt and peck. When you're working on things within the first position, I usually tell my students think one finger per fret. So first fret, first finger, second fret, second finger, third fret, third finger, fourth fret, fourth finger. Or if they're moving up the neck, thinking one finger per fret is still a good concept. So exercise those other fingers. Don't just use one. <laughs> And last but not least, I see students when they're working on scales, especially they lift off each finger individually and it sounds very staccato and abrupt. I'll show you. Hear that? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down my fingers from the previous note so that everything is just more smooth. It's legato. I'm going to slow that down. So do you see that? What happened is that I had my open strings, but when I transitioned from the first fret to the third fret, I held my first finger down. One, that's going to smooth out my transition from this note to this note. And two, my ring finger is not going to have to work as hard because it's not going to have to push down as much. There's going to be less tension on the string and it's just, it's going to be a lot smoother. You notice that here, middle finger, ring finger. So this also serves as, as like an anchor, so to speak, for my hand. I feel that it does. And instead of having just one finger at a time. Hmm. I feel like there's just so much more stability when I'm working on a scale or whatnot, when I'm holding down the previous note. So there you have it. There's my list. Let me know if there's something that resonated with you in the comments section below, or if you have another question, let me know. I love answering your questions. If you're looking to work on your scales and your stretch, I have a Patreon course that's going on right now. You can head over there. It's going to be in the description box below as well. And you get access to different etudes and scales and also songs that have little riffs that help you practice what you've learned within a context. Okay. I hope you have a great day. Bye.